probably the most interesting part of this forecast to people that are uh, jaded with the economics is what uh, retaining the old capital gains rate uh, did to uh, expected uh, revenues for the state. One of the changes uh, that was made in the tax compromise was to extend the current or the existing 15 percent tax rate on capital gains on until 2012. Uh, prior, uh, under current law in November, the, the capital gains rate was scheduled to go up to 20 percent in uh, 2000 and in 2011. And what that would do is uh, the higher tax rate would uh, encourage people for tax purposes not to turn over portfolios as fast as uh, they would have under the lower tax rate. And of course, if they're not turning their portfolio over as rapidly as uh, they would have under prior law, they would um, not be generating as much uh, income. Uh, since we do a current law forecast, our forecast in November was based on a 20 percent capital gains rate. Once that rate changed and in law, uh, we then uh, reforecast capital gains. What turns out is that of the expected income tax, the expected change in individual income tax uh, adjusted gross income, the change in capital gains realizations uh, between uh, what was forecast in, Feb in November and what's forecast in February uh, accounts for about 65 percent of uh, the change in income. Uh, capital gains are only a about 3 percent of total adjusted gross income for Minnesota residents. And so you can see that uh, we've had a huge increase in a very small part of the tax base. It's nice for the state to get more money, uh, but the capital gains read is a rather slender read uh, to rely on because capital gains are very volatile. 